decided, you know, long ago that uh, there weren't a lot of people out there really focusing on the long format narration genres, and especially nowadays being the actor in telling the stories. Because as you know, and as we all know, I mean, synthetic voices are right there behind us and they can read a good story. And so it's more important than ever that students are able to be actors and have the human element, especially in, you know, e-learning, um, corporate. When you're a teacher and you engage with your audience, it becomes super interesting and motivating and inspiring. And unlike a lot of, I would say, online learning classes where you probably took those classes and it was like, hello, I'm going to talk like a robot. George the Tech. Hey, everybody, it's George the Tech. In a different environment today because I'm at my folks' house this week here in Pennsylvania, and it's beautiful. But I've got somebody else to talk to you this week for our George the Tech Trusted Partner Interviews. Today, I've got with me Ann Ganguza. How are you, Ann? George, it's wonderful to be here. So great to have you here. And, you know, you and I are kismet in some ways. We're both from the uh, East Coast, yes. right? So I think we have a lot of that fast talking, quick thinking kind of, you know, mindset, right? We both do. Yes. Your voice acting and coaching now is fabulous, but you really come from a more technical background. Why don't you give everybody mm -hmm. a little bit of a rundown, kind of, you know, over the next few minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it takes. Tell us where <laughs> you got, how you got to where you are now. You began in a non- performance field and morphed yes. into performance. How did that work yes, for you? Yes, I did. I actually started in a very technical field, um, and I actually started as an engineer for an orthopedic company and literally um, loved that job and did that job for about six years. And ultimately, in one of my computer training classes, because I, ha I was fairly technical back then, um, because I did a lot of my design work on the computer, and I met my 2B boss in education for the f next 20 years. Um, um, at one of my computer classes and they were opening up a really cool, you know, technology, uh, you know, magnet school in New Jersey. And they asked if I'd like to come and teach at it and work at it. And I, I said, yeah, you know what? That sounds like fun. And, I love hearing uh, <laughs> that you have a teaching background. I yes, didn't know that you had that teaching background I, and that's I have huge. A, yeah, I have a long standing teaching background. So literally in front of the class um, over 20 years. And so I taught high school, I taught adult continuing ed, I taught college, um, and really just absolutely love education. And if you said to me, Anne, what is your true calling? Um, I would say it's to be an educator. So I really, really enjoy educating and uh, coaching. Um, but I did that for 20 years in New Jersey. And then ultimately, my husband got a job transfer out in California. And I was kind of excited because not that I didn't love my East Coast, I do love my East Coast. Um, but it was I was getting tired of the snow. And uh, he got a transfer to California. And I was like, yes. Uh, so I moved to California. And ultimately, um, right before I had actually, uh, we'd actually moved to California, I'd gotten into voice over because I was installing um, voice over IP phone systems for other area schools and nonprofit organizations. And so the really cool thing about that was that it, being in, I was, I worked for a school system and I taught, but I wasn't full-time teacher. I was actually full-time tech and I taught all the electives and all the technology electives. So it was the best of both worlds for me. And when I wasn't installing some sort of really cool new tech, because a lot of, you know, technology companies wanted the, the kids to learn their technology. So we were like, we were like an Apple Academy. We were a Dell Academy. We were a Cisco Academy. We were like every type of hardware software Academy wow. that you can think of because all those companies wanted students when they were young to learn it and then come out of school knowing it. And so I, I got to have so much fun just playing with tech. And uh, that's really where my technical background comes from. And it's also where I believe you and I, you and I kind of really sync up on this because yes. we always are on the bleeding edge yeah. of technology. We're always... And, Gosh, you, I God, we've known each other forever. I mean, I mm -hmm. hired you to to live stream my uh, my VO Peeps networking uh, group from from teen. That was like twenty. I want to say twenty because I started doing that in twenty. 
10. Yeah. So I think yeah. I might have hired you a couple years later, like in 2012, because yeah. I was live streaming from my coffee table. And George, forgive me, what were, what was the technology we were using we were to stream edge. at that time? I don't, I don't know even, why you, you stream? I don't know was why you expect me to remember that, but it probably... Well, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say it was, it was Ustream because that's what we were yes. using for VOBS. So that's what I was yeah. familiar with. Yeah, yeah. Ustream. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. So, and... And you know when when I talk about my VO Peeps group again, that was when I had I had finally moved to the West Coast after twenty years of education, which again I loved, um, and technology. I missed teaching, and mm-hmm. so I wanted to create that VO Peeps group to kind of have a, an educational resource and to offer educational resources to a uh, community of voice talent. Mm-hmm. And um, and as I was starting to see now, I'm all over the place. But as I was alluding <laughs> to, I had gotten into voiceover, bef- you know, a couple of years. Years before I left, uh, because I started installing voice uh, voice over IP yeah, phone systems. Yeah, as soon as you said and phone I, systems, I was yeah. like, I bet you were the one. I was that the was voice doing the voice. I was the voice, and that was such a cool thing because people weren't, you know, you're a tech guy, so you know, and and you you solve tech issues like on a day to day basis, which is kind of what I did, and I loved it. But people, when they have tech issues. <laughs> They're always like, it's always like in a panic or they're not happy. And so it gets to be, you know, it gets to be like a little tiring after a while. And I love solving problems. But people will never call you up and say, George, oh, my God, I love that the network is working. I love that. (laughs) They usually you're you're being contacted because something doesn't work. And then people are frantic. I will say I have some amazing customers who are so nice that actually do occasionally message us to tell us things are That's working, one, and isn't that which is wonderful? the nicest thing yeah. ever that people do. Yeah, it really is. So yeah, all you people need to just tell George how wonderful he is and tell him, like every once in a while, you just say, hey, thank you for just making things work. So there you go. We all appreciate um, that. It feeds our yeah, souls. It's true. So when I was recording phone messages, because it was so long ago, it was in the 90s, okay, mm-hmm. there was no, you couldn't upload sound files to your phone systems. Phone systems weren't that advanced yet. You had to actually pick up the phone and do a live recording. You literally just recorded so, right into the handset. Right into the handset. So I had to be good at live. And so the funny thing is, is that whenever I did that, I would go and lock myself in a room. And when that happened, nobody could complain to me. Nobody could say, my network's down, my email doesn't work. Um, and so I would lock myself in the room and become like, the best you know phone voice you ever heard or i would imagine myself and that's really i I got bit by the bug and uh and and people started saying why you have a you have a really nice voice you should you should think about doing that as a side hustle and so i looked into it lo and behold i got into voiceover and uh did that part time while I was working at the school, and then ultimately moved um, to the West Coast, where you know I missed teaching. Mm-hmm. Started up VO Peeps, started meeting all of my idols, and all the people on voiceover that I wanted to know. And I said, well, it would be great to kind of host a networking meetup yeah. and interview these people. Mm-hmm. And uh, that way I'll get to know them. They'll get to know me. I get to know people on the West Coast. Technology yep. and, uh, you know, 40 yep. people in my house be damned. Yeah, but <laughs> I know. And at one point, I think our highest amount was was close to because we had some of those big parties, uh, close to seventy people oh, in the yeah, house. Yeah. And uh, boy, we had a fun time though. Yeah. We did it. I we did it for five years every month, like yeah. faithfully. And you were I came gosh, as much were, as I could. You know, you did. Unfortunately, I I'm in the Venice area, and you're in, you're in Irvine, yep. and it mm-hmm. was just logistically really difficult. But yeah. I always yeah. enjoyed being there and it was eating so much fun. Jerry's food. Too. I know. I know. I know. We made it like a whole cook. party. We made it a whole party. We themed out like food and drink, and yeah, it was good times. Yeah. Good so, times. And so the voiceover side of it for you, yeah, became pretty Full-time. much a hundred percent of your life mm-hmm. when you moved here or moved mm-hmm. to California, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, gosh, it's been like 17 years now, and it's uh, full time. And and I just and again that whole missing, you know, uh, you know, being the teacher. And that's why I, you know, I as soon as I as soon as I could, I mean, I started coaching. I started coaching in all aspects of voiceover, and especially with technology and with you know, and social media when it was starting to become very popular. And then you know, voiceover as well. When you have a Um, teaching background, you're going to teach whether you are quote unquote ready or not because it is absolutely isn't that true? wired I into mean, your brain is to teach it it's is. just what you want to do so you know I, I the best coaches out there you know people sometimes are say like well you 
Yeah, whatever. There's a lot of dumb phrases like if you can't do, you teach or oh, God, uh, blah, blah, that. blah. There's oh, all these terrible phrases. And it's so yeah. untrue because the best teachers are great teachers. Yeah. It's it, you know exactly. I've had the professors in universities who are they're great scientists <laughs> and then they teach you physics and it's it's a miserable experience. So I've been there. I've been yeah. it, taught by someone who should not be teaching, who's just there yeah. to do research, right? So I don't think there's that's there's a lot of truth to that. And and your experience has built rapidly over the years, and you're just sharing what you've learned. Yeah. And, and you're you really have kind of found. Am I right in saying you found a, a lane? That you like oh, yeah. to stay in? I, I, found a, I found the lane that, you know, I always tell people to follow, kind of, you know, follow their passion and always bring that experience that we have into voiceover. So I brought my educational experience. I brought my, you know, uh, I brought my medical experience. I brought my, you know, engineering experience into, and I found that my favorite genres were e-learning because I was teaching, uh, medical because I worked in orthopedics for six years designing hip implants, and, uh, and corporate because I did a lot of corporate consulting and it was it was a really cool area where i always say that i was winning at corporate because i could go in get paid and get out and not have to sit in any long meetings and fight with other people's egos about who you know whose idea it was yes <laughs> <laughs> um and 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 it's it gave me a really good perspective on corporate culture so i decided you know long ago that uh, there weren't a lot of people out there really focusing on you know the the long format narration genres and especially nowadays the 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 component of of the being the actor mm -hmm. in in telling the stories because as you know and as we all know i mean synthetic voices are right there behind us and they can they can read a good story you know and they're they're really not bad and so it's more important than ever that students are able to be actors and have the human element especially in all those ones you know e-learning um corporate i mean when when you're a teacher and you engage with your audience it becomes super interesting and motivating and inspiring and unlike a lot of i would say online learning classes where you probably took those classes and it was like hello i'm going to talk like a robot you know yeah, and it just know. became super not that is a very old school mm -hmm. flawed thinking that it is it is teaching or narrating and e-learning or any kind of educational stuff Has can, to be, can be dry articulate. and flat mm -hmm. and lifeless and yeah. not act not and not a form of acting and and the yeah. ones that that book and the ones that succeed and the the best companies want those people they want yeah. the people that can Absolutely. make really translate what's on the paper with energy, interest, and excitement, and yeah. clarity and to the students. And engagement, yeah, and engagement. And you know what's interesting too about corporate, which there's so much there's so much misconception out there about corporate. Whenever I say the word corporate, right, it means company. Companies exist, right, to sell. <laughs> sell products or services, that's it. So when you talk about corporate narration, right? Why does a company put out a, uh, you know, a, a, a video with, with information about their company, even if they're talking about their mission statement, right? Or talking about how they give back. Well, they're, they're selling, they're selling their brand, they're selling their products and services. And it's a super, super subtle sell. Oh, lots of S's there, mm -hmm. George. I believe I'm not sibling here. Uh, <laughs> no. It's a very subtle sell. And so for me, you know, intellectually speaking, I love that because it's so, it's such a challenge. It's such a creative challenge. And for those people that really want to, you know, excel at the long format narration and be that voice that can, you know, that can really bring the brand to life and tell the story, they're the ones who actually have to understand and analyze the script and then be able to tell that story. Um, and make that, you know, I say, make the words come alive. Yeah. It seems so cliche, but in reality, that's what you have to do more than ever, even in corporate. And the funny thing is, is I'll have students say, but that's not what I hear, you know, when I, you know, out there. And I'm like, but that doesn't mean that it makes it good. Right. Just because you hear it and it exists out there, you want to, you, you want to transcend be, that. Yeah. You want to, ex you want to be elevated. You want to be that narrator that's like amazing. Yeah. And people are just like, oh my God, I can't put my finger on it, but, or boy, they really know how to tell a story. And I want that. Well, I want that person. Now we get to talk about how they get to achieve that skill set with you. Well, how does your program work? And what do you look for in somebody that wants to work with you? 
I want to have a discussion before we start working together to find out, you know, what are their goals? What are their aspirations? I love working with students who, who want to be students, right? Who want to work at it. There are some people who are in a hurry, uh, yeah. you know, and, and uh, you know, because way to I, cash. they're kind of yeah. like, all right, lady, let's get, let's get exactly. to the book. And, and and they almost get upset when I'm like, well, no, wait a minute. We really need to kind of work on your acting. And they're like, but it's just e-learning. It's just, you know, it's just, I mean, I don't understand. I, they you might know, even I mean, be checking. And, they might be choosing this uh, category because they think there's no learning. Exactly. It's kind of like and, if they, I would be told there's no math. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I didn't realize I'd have to work at this. And the funny thing is, is that because it's just the simple fact that it's longer than a 30 or 60 second commercial, guess what? The chances of that copy being horrible <laughs> are that much greater, right? And you've got to really, go, you know, cut through the weeds and cut through, you know, that bad writing and find that story and you've got to hold it for longer. So for me, it's like such a cool creative challenge to do any type of long format narration and to be like engaging, to be that actor. And so and carry to work it all with throughout. me. Yeah, and carry it throughout. I mean, not just at the beginning of the scene, but mm -hmm. three quarters of the way through that five minute script, right? You know, where's your head at? You know, mm -hmm. you still know that you're talking to someone or did you launch off into like just a read? So you're going to determine yeah. through a little chat before they commit yes, whether they're absolutely. the right fit and whether, or whether mm -hmm. they're, they're just wasting their money and their time. Exactly. So I really believe in coaching before demo production. And I'm that person who I'm... I'm anal um, mm -hmm. to your benefit. I'm just that teacher, and I want you to be able to go into the studio and make those acting choices on your own and be able to reproduce what's on your demo. Yeah. Um, and if you do work with me to produce demos, because that's another thing I do, I'm not going to let you produce that demo until you're ready, until I feel mm -hmm. that you're going to go into the studio, make good choices, um, and really understand what it means to, to you know be the actor, tell the story, and get engagement from the very beginning of the script all the way through the end. So so for me, it's it's coaching, um, and then when I feel that you've got you know the skills underneath you, the fundamental skills. And by the way, the fundamental skills that I teach are going to work for any genre. Um, right, right. As I was mentioning about corporate, it's a sell, right? So think about it as a long commercial. It's just nuanced, right? Yeah. So it takes longer to get to the cell. And sometimes the cell is really not obvious at all. Yeah. But in reality, I'm teaching the same thing that you would need to know if you were working with me for commercial. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the fundamental techniques are to assess the story, understand, you know, who you are and uh, how you can engage with your listener. Mm -hmm. so. And well, tell us where they should start with you and what they can expect and when they get started after that interview always go to anganguza.com. You can book a free 20-minute consult with me, and then I can get an idea of, you know, what it is you're looking for. I kind of like to have people who are looking or have an idea of what genre they want to study. If not, then we talk about the different genres. And I always make sure that people are aware of the market out there, because while a lot of people may want to start off and do animation or commercials, sometimes long format narration, really, it's a huge marketplace. Uh, it just may not get the glory. And it doesn't shrink. Uh, yeah, it doesn't shrink at all. I mean, 30.4, everybody gets sick of me saying this, but 30.4 okay. million registered companies. That's a lot of opportunities. You know, every one of them has something to sell. Uh, and so every one of them also, by the way, every company also has to train their employees on human resource policy or safety, or they need to train their external clients on their software or their product. Yeah, it's not offer. their boss walking in, okay, yeah. now we're going to talk about, no, it's it's a whole nother exactly. level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge, huge, uh, huge industry, lots of opportunities, lots of work. It's not going anywhere, guys. AI is not taking over. 30.4 million registered companies um, yeah. and doing their corporate or their e-learning. People are just afraid and saying, well, I don't think the, you know, e-learning is going to be taken over by AI. Uh, the people who don't care about, you know, a, a connected teacher or somebody that wants to motivate and inspire their, their audience, um, they're going to hire, you know, somebody who, who maybe just reads it. <laughs> um, like and these might be the companies that aren't going right. to be around in five to 20 yeah, years. Exactly. 
But you'll always have those people that value quality, that will value yeah. that that human connection, that will say, hey, look, I really want my employees to be trained and I want them to be engaged when yes. they're being trained. And they will be willing to pay you, um, mm -hmm. you know, well. Um, so it's not going to be, oh, I'm going to be cheap and just hire some robot mm -hmm. voice because that's not going to train my employees in the way that I want or it's right. not going to tell my corporate story in the way that I want. Right. So Exactly. I know um, that especially younger people are more triggered by AI now. Mm -hmm. My daughter's 15. So she's too. turned off by it like you wouldn't believe. Oh, mm -hmm, and others mm -hmm. her age can pick it out. They can hear it. Yeah. There's AI-driven music generation apps now that someone our age group or older may be, oh, that's really pretty. I like that. And then someone younger and more savvy and yeah. tuned in be like, yeah. oh, that's AI. I can hear it a yeah. mile away. Oh, I hate it. So, but there's yeah. that whole off, all that whole authenticity, yeah. you know, thing where I want it to be real, and you know, I it, it's so interesting the way the whole it's it's played out. You know, um, it's advanced so much yes. in the last couple of years, incredibly, and I believe it'll find its way in terms of where is AI most useful yep. in in the world, mm -hmm. and voices may not be it. I mean, for maybe an Alexa, sure, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or something with short sentences, and and yeah. we're not faked out by it we're not you know we know that it's but i really believe we know that everybody wants siri to be smarter <laughs> exactly uh <laughs> but in reality when we want to be moved and motivated and inspired and yeah. you know what i mean and we want to catch capture people's attention it's not going to be a robot that does it. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly believe that. And I really don't think it's it's going to be a threat. I think that AI will find its place where it needs to. And I think it's going to be in just between you and me, technically speaking, I think it's going to be in data, you know, and, and just data harvesting and data collection and then being able to take that data and just have, make good decisions. I want my healthcare to be helped by AI. Absolutely. That is for sure, yes. you know? Yes. Um, so uh, I know every conversation almost ends up in an AI conversation because you're more dialed in than many that I know and and I'm pretty dialed into what's going on too. So it's important to talk about it. I appreciate your input it on is. it too. It is. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. Now I should talk about me and how we can talk about <laughs> <laughs> not being AI. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So sign up for that 20-minute consult. We'll chat and I'll get an idea as to what your goals and, right. and we can work a strategy together. And then ultimately, you know, everything is on anganguza.com. Mm -hmm. You would sign up for a series of coaching sessions. And then ultimately, um, I like to lead into a demo because why not have a demo produced by someone who's worked with you and, and directed you mm -hmm. for, you know, all of these sessions and that knows you. And so I'll be vocally branding you as we go and yeah. that is you know i'll be listening and saying okay i like the way okay i love the way your your sound um works with this brand or in this demographic yeah and so your demo is really not just all about your voice but it's also a strategy it's a marketing strategy mm. and so i want it to be more than just showcasing your acting which absolutely is first and foremost that i do on demos i showcase your acting your voice of course is is beautiful and unique and and uh showcasing your acting is what's gonna mm -hmm. i think get you the gig and then also i want it to be a a, a market specific kind of demo so mm -hmm. i can i can kind of tailor and custom tailor that demo to brands and demographics and sounds that work for you so that people yeah. can listen to your demo and then just hire you. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for jumping on to be with me on, yeah. on a little series here. And I love to send people to you. I've been sending people to you forever and uh, absolutely love it that I can, that I can just say, oh, I've got the, I've got the perfect person uh, so that can check your sound and help you out with all of that tech. Oh, thank you. Which, yeah, Thanks absolutely. So much, Take care. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.